This is the homework solution to page 120, numbers 21, 23, 26, 29, and 32. The first problem that we have here asks this, number 21 asks us to find the x and y intercept of each linear function. Describe what the intercept means, okay? Before I move on, I would like to clarify some information about the x and y intercept. First of all, Please be aware that the x-intercept is where the graph passes through the x-axis. That is also, next, the y-intercept is where the graph passes through the y-axis. Okay, so let's just, here's the, here's the graph here. Let me just pull that up to paint for you. All right, here, here's paint, right? Based on the depth, based on the definition, okay, based on the definition, where the graph passes through the x-axis, the x-axis is horizontal, so let's look at that, okay, the x-axis goes right here, this is the x-axis, that is the x-axis, and it seems like where that is touching is right here okay let me fill that in solid for you right there okay and that point looks like it is looks like that is six comma zero okay for the x intercept and for the next one okay it's right here the next part is where the graph passes through the y-axis the y-axis is top down right here top down and where that touches is right here that itself looks like zero for the x and 20 on the y okay so that is my values okay so let me just make this smaller for you. Let's write that information. Okay. It seems like the exactly like what it says here, the x intercepts is six comma zero. So for here it was x intercept was six comma zero and the y intercept was let's look at it again zero comma twenty right zero comma twenty okay we're not done because it asks us to describe the what the intercept means okay what does these intercept means okay so what does the x coordinate refer to the x coordinate here is time so six seconds and the height here is height of height in feet okay and that is the descent of the eagle so at six seconds the descent of an eagle is at zero height in feet Good. Y intercept says at zero second, the descent of an eagle is at zero height in feet. Okay. Good. So again, I just plugged in here. I just plugged in the units, right? And I plugged in the units here as well. There you go. So this would be my interpretation of what the intercept means, right? The next one, number 23. This says to graph each equation by using the x and y intercept. And this is my equation. y equals to 4 plus 2x. To do this, we have to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, okay? So, a little review. The x-intercept is when y equals to 0, okay? So, we can use that information to help us. Our first step is to 
it's an order pair okay and from the order pair we need to find whatever this x value is and we own we always know that y equals to zero because this is a definition of the x intercept okay and i explained why above here okay i explained the reason why up there right so first thing i always rewrite my equation i know that y equals to zero so i make that substitution let me make that red for you do you see how i made that substitution after this i have to solve for x that means i have to get x alone subtract four to both sides okay the left hand side becomes negative four the right hand side becomes 2x divide 2 to both sides to get x alone then simplify x equals to negative 2 okay so the order pair is something which is my x comma 0 so the order pair should be x intercept is negative 2 which is my x value comma 0 because my y equals to 0 the next one Okay, the y-intercept is when x equals to 0, and this is a definition. Okay, this is just the definition of the x, the y-intercept. Let me make that blue for you. Oh, no, green looks good. All right, and again, this is an order pair of 0, comma something. Okay, this is because x equals to 0, and that something is going to be our y-value. Okay, first step is to always rewrite my equation. Okay, if you're wondering where do I get y equals to 4 plus 2x, that is the, f that is the equation that it's actually, the question is giving us. Okay, substitute, so 0 goes in for x right here, so you should notice, 0 goes in for x, okay, All right, this becomes 0, and 4 equals, y equals to 4. So y equals to 4. The order pair should look like 0 comma something, and that something becomes 4. It should not be negative 4. It should be 4. <laughs> okay? Good? Okay. Here's the work if you would like to see it again. Okay. And it's asking us to now graph it. Okay? So let me just grab this chart. Okay. Pull up paint for you here here you go let me pull up paint all right let me make that a little bit bigger all right so the y-intercept let's graph the y-intercept first it says it is zero negative zero comma four okay let me make that red um, this is the let's Let's get a dot going here. Where's zero? So zero, uh, four. So up here. All right. Ooh, here. Let me fill that in. Maybe that would look better. Oop. Right. Four, zero, four. Good. Oops. Nope. That's five. Zero, comma four. Right. This is zero in the x and four in the y. Okay. That is the x-intercept. Then let's go to the y-intercept y-intercept is negative 2, 0, so negative 2 here, 0, right? Then I will connect that with a line, okay? There you go. That would be, whoops, sorry about that. That would be my graph, okay? I graphed the two points, and I put a line through it, okay? That would be my solution, okay? So, whoops, sorry. Let me grab this comma right and that would be the graph whoa okay there you go that would be the graph for that one okay there you go the next one same instructions graph each equation by using the x and y intercept and here's the equation that is given for 26 i'm going to move a little bit faster okay if you want a detailed more explanation please refer to number 23 okay the first thing i'm going to do is please understand that the x intercept is when y equals to zero and the x intercept is an order pair it is something comma zero that zero is because y equals to zero let me make this red. 
All right, so my first step is to always rewrite the equation, make that substitution, y equals to 0. So x plus 0 equals to 4. Do some simplification, y equals to 4. So my order pair for the x-intercept is 4 comma 0. Next thing, the y-intercept is when x equals to 0. And again, it is an order pair that follows 0 comma something. Right? I wrote my equation as my first step, like always, and I make that substitution of x equals to two, 0. Okay, plug in 0 for x, y equals to 4. Okay, let me simplify, y equals to 4. So the order pair for the x, so for the y-intercept is 0 comma 4. Okay, so let's do some graphing. Let me pull, let's, let's grab that. Okay, let's grab that. Okay, there you go. Let me make that a little bit bigger. All right, so it says the x-intercept here is 4 comma 0. Let's look at that. So 4 comma 0. Whoop, here, let me let me fill that in for you here. 4 comma 0 right here. That's 4 comma 0. Then the next one for the y-intercept is 0 comma 4. Okay? So 0 in the x and 4 in the y. The, oop, that's a little bit off. There you go. And I draw that with a line here. There you go. Okay. That would be my graph for this one. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. That is how I use the x intercepts and y intercept to g g help me, right? graph each equation. Okay, there you go. Uh, the next one, it's asking me to graph each equation by making a table. Okay, so here's my table. Okay, this is the table here. Okay, there is the x column and the y column. Okay, the x is my independent, right? I call this my input. Okay. I can make my input anything I want. So for this sake, let me just use some numbers, okay? Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right. So I'm going to put in the x values here, and let's see what my y values are, okay? All right. So, for this one, it says that x is always equal to negative 2, okay? What this means, okay, is that x is always the value of negative 2. So, can I even use these inputs of negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4? No, because this says that x is always always negative 2, right? Right? This means x is always negative 2, okay? So, let's pull up the graph, okay? Let's see, is there a... Oh, no, I got rid of the graph paper. All right, let's see if I can just undo this for some graphs. All right, that's good, okay? So, so let's look at the graph. Right, x is always negative 2. Where is x always negative 2? This is when x is 0. This is x is 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. So let's go to the left. This is when x is negative 1. This is when x is negative 2. <gasps> right here. Okay, this seems like a good spot. So x is always negative 2. Right, x is always negative 2. Okay, so what, what needs to happen is we're going to draw a line straight down here. This means that no matter what, no matter for any value, x is always negative 2. That's what this function says, right? So we don't even have to put our chart because, okay, x is always negative 2, okay? So let's, let me just get rid of this chart. 
delete. Oh, that's bad. Let me uh, delete table. Okay, boom. There you go. Okay, no matter what, the value of x is always negative two, so it's a line straight down. Okay, we also call this a vertical line. Okay, when x equals to a number, we always call that a vertical line. All right, the next one. 3x equals to 4. Now we can actually plug in some values, okay? So for this one, let's just use negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? All right, so let's see. I'm going to use this. This is my equation, okay? Let's say I plugged in um, x equals is equal to negative 4. So here's my equation. Let me write my equation one more time. And I plug in negative 4. Okay. If I plug in negative 4 here, what is my y? This becomes, I think this becomes negative 12. Okay. So I plugged in negative 12 here. Good. Let's say I plugged in negative 3 here. So I plugged in negative 3. Okay. Negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So I plug in negative 9 here. Whoops, negative 9. Next, I say plug in negative 2. So I plugged in negative 2. T 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So I plug in negative 6 here. Plug in negative 1. Plug in negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So I plug in. So this is equal to negative 3. Plug in 0 for x, plug in 0 for x. Okay. 3 times 3 times 0 is 0. So I plug in 0 right here. When x equals to 1, x equals to 1, 3 times 1 is 3. So I get the value of 3 here. Alright, when x equals to 2, 3 times 2 is 6. 6, here you go. Here you go with 6. 3. 3 times, what is x here? 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. So that is 9. 3 times 4, when x equals to 4. Look, x equals to 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So this is equal to 12. All right, so we have some wonderful points here. Let me just pull up my graph. Okay. All right, so the first point order pair is negative 4, okay? Let me make that a little bit smaller. Let's see if you can see the whole thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Okay, so the first point here is negative 4, 12. Let's look at that one. Negative 4, so I go to negative 4 here in my x, and I go to negative 12 here in my y. So it's down here somewhere, okay? The next one is negative 3, 9. Right, negative 3, and I go to down to negative 9 right here. Okay, because it this is 8, so this is 9, and this is 10. Next one, negative 2 is negative 6, so negative 2 in the x is negative 6 in the y, so negative 2, 6. Okay, next one, negative 1, 3. Negative 1, go down to th negative 3. 0, 0. Here's 0, 0. Next one, 1, 3. That is 1. Go up 3. 2, 6. 2, comma, 6. 3, comma, 9. 3, comma, 9. Last one, 4, comma, 12. 4, comma, 12. This looks like up here. Okay. And this looks like a straight line. Okay. There you go. So let me just, all right, that here, I don't even want to paste it. It's right here. This would be the graph for number 32, okay? And that should cover everything for homework.